all praises. Uh, tonight's topic is called Excuses to Escape Responsibility. Excuses to Escape Responsibility. We're going to be going over that today. Okay? Excuses to Escape Responsibility. Because the most that God gave us, He gave us law for us to be responsible. You understand? Um, but as a nation of Israel, we make excuses to escape the responsibility that the Lord has given us to observe and apply these laws in the lens of our captivity, so we may be gathered together in the spirit of the Son of Christ and be delivered when we return. Okay? Um, let's open up. Give me the book. Give me the book of Nehemiah. Okay? Nehemiah 8. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8 mm -hmm. so they read in the book so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sins and caused them to understand the reading so you know what I want you to do I want you to start at verse 1 Nehemiah 8 verse 1 let's start from verse 1 Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 go ahead and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. Great. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the Lord of Moses. To do what? Which the Lord had to bring the book of the law of Moses. To bring the book of the law of Moses. So our forefather was about the law. You understand? They brought the book. They opened the book, the books of the law of Moses. Okay, the milk. Read on. Which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Which the Lord had commanded to Israel. That's the responsibility that the Lord most that God has given unto us. So now in order for, for us to set the nation in order to gather our people together, to bring to build the family of the nation of Israel, to, to bring it to glory as it once were, guess what we need? We need the laws of the most High God. You understand? That the Lord commanded unto us by his holy prophet. Read. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, mm -hmm. and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. That's September. So now, but what, what, what you want to notice is that it says, and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation. That is the same thing that we do. Every day at 7.30, we are class. That is the, that's the same thing that our forefathers did back then. To bring the nation of Israel together. That's why it says men and women. Family. You understand? Family. Men and women, husband and wife, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters. Because the men and women will be teaching the sons and the daughters of the nation of Israel. That's how we bring the family together. Okay? Read that part again, verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And all the people gathered them. Verse 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. So now it's uh, the law before the congregation, both of men and women. You understand? Because these are these be the men and then the women. Guess what? It's going into that God's divine order. Men, women, and then the women will teach the children. Okay? It says, and all that could hear with understanding. That's very important right there. All that could hear with understanding. Because the only way you will be able to receive understanding, you must do what? Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. That's how you receive that understanding. It says, all that could hear with understanding. Okay? Psalms 111 verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding. His praise endureth forever. Hold on. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. So for us to have a good understanding of the scriptures, we must be doing the commandments. That's why they brought the law. They brought the book of the law of Moses. You understand? Which contains commandments that the Most High God gave unto our forefathers to teach us. Okay, go back to where was that? Nehemiah 8, verse 2 again. Come on. Shalom, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Nehemiah 8 verse 2. Let's go. 
Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding, upon the first day of the seventh month. Read on, let's play, come on. And he read wherein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. Read. Before the men and the women. That's the men and women that we read about in verse 2. Go ahead. And those that could understand. And those that could understand. For them to understand, they needed to have been keeping the commandments. You understand? And those that could understand. That's what they Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13 verse 9. Because this is what Christ said. Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You see what he's saying? If any man have an ear, let him hear. Meaning your spiritual ear must be open when the laws of God is coming out. In order for your spiritual ears to open up, you need to humble down to what this Bible is saying. Then you'll be able to receive God's law, instruction and wisdom. Okay, go back to where was that? Nehemiah 8, verse 3 again. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 3. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the man and the woman, and those that could understand. Those that could understand. And the ears. Meaning those that kept the commandment. You understand, Read. Really? And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. You see that part right there? It says, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. That's the same thing that Christ commanded. He that has an ear, let him hear. That is what we are reading here. The ears of the people that were attentive unto the book of the law. Because in order for you to be attentive, you, your spiritual ear must be open to receive that which is being given to you. You understand? That which is being taught unto you. Jump down to the five now. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. You see that thing? Meaning what? So he was, hold on. The reason why this is important is that and Ezra Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. Meaning he wasn't speaking out of his own mind. He was reading from the book that said the law. Give me that in first, in first Peter chapter 4, verse 11. First book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 11. Read. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You see that thing? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's what Ezra was doing. That was just in the audience, in the sight of all the people. Because what? To make sure that they understand that he's not speaking in own mind. That was, that's always been the custom. So that's why when today, when you go into the scriptures and there's a problem, it's because of what? It's because they are not moving in the spirit of Christ. They are moving in the spirit of what? The spirit of the world that teaches our people to what? To hate God's commandments because so that what? So that they don't have to apply what is written. To escape responsibility. Because that's what the world teaches. The world teaches our people to escape responsibility. And how do they escape it? They make excuses for their actions. Okay? Go back to where was that? Nehemiah 8, verse 5 again. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 5. Read. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. Mm -hmm. For he was above all the people. He was the leader. Go ahead. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Because that's the custom. That's why it says, well, I stand up for the holy head is the same thing. Give me that in Leviticus 19. Okay. Leviticus. I believe it's Leviticus 19, right? You know what? Leviticus 19, verse 32. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 32. Go ahead. Thou shalt rise up before the holy head. You see what the Lord is saying? Thou shalt rise up before the holy head. What we read in the book of Ezra, it says, for he was above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Go ahead. 
and honor the face of the old man. Read. And fear thy God, I am the Lord. Because that's the commandment, that's the law. That's the law in this. You understand? That's why if you notice today, our people, when we, when we, when they see us do that, some brothers and sisters in the congregation will be saying, why they, why do why we have to get up? Why do we have to get up? That's because we have been brought so low that things that that the, the things that project honor, respect, and royalty is for the foreign thing to us. You understand? That's why we have to return back to what is written, as it is written. Okay, go back to Nehemiah. Okay, Nehemiah, jump down to the eight now. Nehemiah 8. Read verse 5 again, then we're going to jump. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. Read. Right? For he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Now jump down to verse 8 now. So the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. You see that thing? They read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. Oh, they give me the book of Isaiah, 34, verse 16. Isaiah 34, verse 16. It says, they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verses 16. Go ahead. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. Read. None shall want a mate. He says, none shall want a mate. Meaning what? You don't need, you, you can don't make the Bible with any other book. Okay, that was that they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense. Why? Because the commandment is you must seek it out of the book of the law, not any other book, the book of the law, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. You understand? Don't make the Bible with any other book to confuse yourself. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to where was that? Nehemiah 8, verse 8. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. Read. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly mm -hmm. and gave the sense. And gave the sense. Because out of the laws of God, you're going to get sense. The laws of God give you sense. When you don't keep the laws of the most high God, you don't have sense. You don't make sensible decisions. You understand? Because the laws of God, they, they command you, they, 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 they restrict you into a specific way, into that straight and narrow path. When you move outside of that, you are no longer in the spirit of, you don't have sense at that point. You are senseless. Because the laws of God bring order to the chaos. Okay, read it again. So the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. Read. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, mm -hmm. and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And caused them to understand the reading, meaning what they were breaking it down, piece up upon piece, and line upon line, here a little and there a little, to give the sense. You understand? So it says, to engage the sense and cause them to understand the reading. Remember in verse 5, in verse 3 and 2, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all Israel so that they know where he's reading from. You understand? They were giving the sense of the scriptures. Why? Because the laws of God give you sense. That's the point. Okay, watch this. Give me Sarah. We're we coming back here. If you just look at chapter 18, verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 14. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline. Okay. And that diligently seek after his judgments. Okay, we're coming back to this one. Okay, we're coming back. I don't think that's the one I want. Give me that thing that's the last one. Yeah, that's what I want. The last one verse 18. Yeah, that's it right here. The last one verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 18. Read. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. You see that part? As is and a house, hold on. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. You understand? 
Because a house that is destroyed, we talk about your spiritual house. Your spiritual house becomes destroyed if you don't want, if you don't take care of that house. If you build your house upon sand, it surely will be destroyed. Read that again. Come on, read the verse again, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, chapter 21, verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. Read. And the, and the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. You see what the Bible is saying? As is the house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. Because with the job of wisdom is to do what? Is to build. We use wisdom to build, you understand, to build our spiritual houses. So now, watch this. Is that, and the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Why? Because the unwise, if the, the unwise doesn't have knowledge. The unwise does not have knowledge. So when they speak, they speak because you can tell they don't have sense. Where do you get the sense from? Go back to Nehemiah 8 verse 8. Okay, we're going over these babies. These are these babies. Okay. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sins. Read. And caused them to understand the reading. And caused them to understand the reading. You see that part right there? So for you to understand what is written, because it has caused them to understand the reading, meaning to understand that which is written. For you to understand what is written, you have to apply Psalm 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. So for you to understand that which is written, you need to apply that which is written. Okay? Go back to Sarah 21 now. If you just pick up 21, verse 18 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, mm -hmm. so is wisdom to a fool. So is wisdom to a fool. And the knowledge Wait. and the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. The knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Because senseless talk is an example of what? Lack of law. Senseless talk is an example of lack of law and order. The laws of God, they give you sense so that when you open your mouth, you'll open your mouth with wisdom. You understand? Wisdom will proceed out of your mouth. Your conversation will tell us, guess what? Give me that in Ephesians 1. Okay? Or you know what? Let's stay in the book of Ephesians. Okay? Give me Ephesians chapter 9, verse 15. Let's stay in Sarah. Sarah 9, 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 15. Read. Let thy talk be with the wise. You see that part right there? Let thy talk be with the wise. Who's the wise? Those that keep the commandments. Give me that in Psalm 19, verse 7. We come in back here. Let thy talk be with the wise. So the talk of the unwise is what? It's senseless. So if you want to, if you, if you want to grow in the truth, your talk must be with the wise. The unwise is a waste of time. You're going to waste your time. Okay? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of God Converting. is perfect. Converting. The law of God is perfect. Go ahead. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. You see that thing? Making wise the simple. So the laws of God is what's going to make the wise, is what's going to make the simple to be wise. That's the wise you're talking about. The wise is those that keep God's commandments. So go back to where you were that now. Sarah 9, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 15. Go ahead. Let thy talk be with the wise. Read. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. And all your communication in the law of the Most High. In order for your communication to be in the law of the Most High God, you need to be in the scriptures. You need to apply, you need to study. You understand? You need to meditate upon what you are reading. Okay? That's how your communication is going to be 
in the law of the Most High God. Your communication cannot be in the law of the Most High God if you don't study the word of the Most High. If your mind is occupied on other things, what's happening in social media? What's happening with such and such? What's happening with such? Did you see that celebrity did such and such? Listen, your communication is not in the law of the Most High. Your communication, if your mind, if you're always occupied in what people are doing in the world, guess what? Your conversation, give me that in Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 5. Read. Let your conversation be without covetousness. You see what the commandment says? There's a commandment right there. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Because guess what? When your mind is always on what's happening in the world, the celeb, what they are doing, their life and all that, you understand? You're always on social media, but if you're not pushing the truth, but you're always on social media, guess what? Your conversation is going to be what? It's not going to be without covetousness. Your conversation will be filled with covetousness because you'll be coveting the things that you see happening in the world because you are one foot in and one foot out. Okay, read that part again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Really? It's your conversation. Come on. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. You see what he's saying? And be content with such things as ye have. Because this, this law goes into what? Goes into the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. Okay? This is the last commandment. Thou shalt not covet. So he's reminding us again. Read on. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. You see that thing? As long as you stay in the scripture, as long as you apply what is written, you understand, your conversation will be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That's, what, that's how your, your, your conversation is going to be with the wife. Because there are a lot of the times, because when I talk to brothers, I can tell this one is studying. And I can tell when I talk to the sisters, I can tell this sister is studying, this one is not. I can tell when I can talk when I talk to the brothers, this one is studying, this one is not. Okay? I can tell them. Why? Because you're not speaking your spirit in the Bible. Your conversation. Your mind is not occupied with what is written. So it's difficult for your conversation to become, to be as it becomes as the gospel of Christ. You understand? Go back to where was that now? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. Read. Let thy talk be with the wise. Let your talk be with the wise. Read. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. And all your communication in the law of the Most High. Your communication. Because you might be asking, so where am I at work? Am I bringing precepts? No. Because when you're at work, you're not reading the scriptures. It's time for you to apply. Which means that when you, when gossip pops up, your job is not to be, is not to be involved in that gossip. Don't, don't be trying to be too curious about what's going on with such and such. Because at work, there's a lot of gossiping. Our people like to gossip at work. You understand? They call it politics. When you always aware of what's going on in that department, in that department, what's going on with that brother, that sister, at work, guess what? You're, you're not applying the scripture. Because when you close the Bible, because you're not walking around open with the Bible open, as soon as you close the book, that's when that is, that's when that's when it's time for you to apply. To show yourself a proof that you have said. You understand? Read again, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 15. Let thy talk be with the wise. Read. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. I'm just, I was just using this as an example. But guess what? Put the spirit is on. Okay, if the shoe fits, you just put it nicely on. Okay. Let's go back to Nehemiah 8, verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. 
So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And caused them to understand the reading. So that's what's going on right now. To cause you to understand the thing that you are reading. But for you to understand the thing that you are reading, you have to be reading and applying. That's when questions come. Some questions when I see on the WhatsApp, I'm like, I mean, like some brothers and some brothers have noticed, they just be posting a question, not necessarily because like the, you can see they are not, they are, they are, they are not in it. They just read it. Okay? You just read it for the sake, okay, I just want to put my chapter. I can tell by the question you are asking, you are not in it. Okay? So you brothers and sisters, you really need to go, you need to sit down and go over the scriptures. Meditate upon what is written. Meditate upon the ordinances of the Most High. You understand? Okay. Watch this. Um, now, Nehemiah is explaining in the book of Nehemiah, Ezra is giving the people the sense. So the people can be able to understand the things that are written and be able to apply the things correctly. Okay. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Leviticus 26, verse 2. Because the Most High God gave us laws for us to be responsible and make responsible decisions. When we reject God's commandment or we are rebellious, we make excuses, is because we don't want to take responsibility for the job that the Lord gave unto us. Now watch this. Leviticus 26, verse 2. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 2. Read. Right? He shall keep my Sabbaths and res and re Reverence. And reverence. And reverence, meaning what? And reverence. Reverence means to have a deep respect. Deep respect, go ahead. And reverence, my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Read it again, read it again, verse 2. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 2. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Okay, it says, ye shall, ye shall, ye shall, ye shall keep my Sabbaths. And reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. So when you read the book of Leviticus, the 26th chapter, it goes into what you read about in Deuteronomy to the 28th chapter. Okay, the blessings and the curses. Next verse, go ahead. If you walk in my statutes, if and keep see, that, hold on, that's a conditional statement. If, 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 go ahead. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. This is a responsibility right here. The Lord is giving us responsibility. Here. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, the Lord is giving us responsibility. But as Israel, we want to escape responsibility with excuses. You understand? We always have an answer for everything. Meaning what? We always have an excuse why certain things are not done. Read again, verse 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 3. Read. Right? If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. Go ahead. Then I will give you rain in due season. Come on. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her their fruit. Because you sound a bit far. You sound a bit far. Did you adjust to what yourself? Ready, sir. Okay, read verse 2 again for me. No, read verse 3 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. If you walk in then, my statutes, hold on. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. So notice, this is the book of Leviticus. If you walk in my statutes, these are bylaws, and keep my commandments and do them. So it's more than just what we read in the book of Exodus, the 20th the chapter. You understand? It's more than that. If you walk in my statutes, these are bylaws. These are laws that Moses implemented in the wilderness because of what? Wicked Negroes. Wicked men and women in the wilderness. Guess what? These laws had to be what? Had to be uh, put in place. You understand? Childhood laws. And keep my commandments and do them. Give me the biblical. Uh, 27, the last verse. You look at 27. The book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 34. Read. 
These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. So now, with the book of Leviticus is also a the book of law. You understand? It's not just what we read about in Exodus 20. It's more than that. Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, is a foundation. You understand? It's a foundation where all the laws and the prophets, they branch out of. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Exodus 24, verse 4. He says, you shall keep my statutes and my commandments and do them. Exodus 24, verse 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 12. Wait. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be thee. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. So now the Lord is telling Moses, Listen, I've given you what? I've, you have, I've written laws that you must teach the children of Israel. It says, tables of stone and a law, a law and commandments, a law and commandments. So it's the law, the statutes and the commandments. You understand? So there's, there's your commandments and your laws connected to these, the commandment that was written in Exodus 20. So you've got the commandments and your laws that join or associate or branch out of the, 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 the commandments that we read about in Exodus 20, the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Okay, read verse 12 again. The book of Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be thee, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. So now, watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Remember, the, the, the Lord is giving, is teaching Moses, giving Moses the law, you understand, so he can teach the children of Israel, to teach us, to give us responsibility and sense. Because once you have sense, you want to understand responsibility. But when you don't have sense, because where do we get the sense from? We get the sense from the laws of God. The laws of God give us sense, you understand. Once you have the sense, we get to understand our responsibility. Therefore, we don't get to make excuses. For the responsibility that is set before us. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Wait. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, mm. even as the Lord my God commanded me. Go ahead. That ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. So now he says, I've taught you statutes and judgments. He used Moses to teach us the law, the statutes and the judgments, meaning the punishment for breaking his law, the statutes and the commandments. He says, I've taught you statutes and judgments. I've given you responsibility. You understand? That, is for that, that, that responsibility that I've given you is to do what? You're going to possess the land, you're going to rule the nation. For you to rule the nation, this is what you need to learn. You need to, law, you need to learn law order, judgment. You understand? You need to learn all of that and the consequences for breaking these laws so you can preserve the kingdom that I'm going to give unto you. Okay? Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. You are pausing too much. Ye, you are messing me up. You are pausing too much. Could you just read verse 5 again, please? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. That's the land of Canaan, you know? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So now verse five is the seed, it's found it in the six. It says, keep therefore and do them. You see that part right there? Keep therefore and do them. Keep, the, keep what and do what? Keep the law, keep the statutes and the judgment. You understand? Keep the statutes and be mindful of the judgment that will come forth 
if you don't keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments that you are being taught. That is what it's saying right there. So the message that was given to us back then in the wilderness is the same message today. It pertains to today because how did we end up in slavery? We broke the commandments. So now we must return back to the commandments and receive the sense that we lost. You understand? Read the six again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. In the what? Which shall hear in the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations. We went over this a couple of something like that. In the sight of the nations, because the nations were what? The nations will be able to see. How are they going to see? Give me that in Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In the sight of the nations. Because in, in, for it to be in the sight of the nation, the nation have to see something going on with us. That is what? It's, it, that is contrary to what they have taught us all these years. You understand? Because what they taught us is to move away from the, our, our, our history. is to go against what is written in our history book, the book of our fathers. You understand? So what the nations are going to see, they're going to see us applying what is written. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, what says the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men really? that, they, that they may see your good works. That they may what? And glor that they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works in the sight of the nations and in the sight of all Israel, our people. You understand? Your light must what? It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. They must see you applying the laws of God and they must see sense and wisdom in you because of the decisions that you make. Go ahead. And glorify your father which is in heaven. And glorify your father which is in heaven. That's how the nations are going to be. That's, how, that's what it means when it says in the sight of the nation. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6 now. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. Keep the four and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, really? which shall hear all these statutes. Which and shall say, hear, shall hear. How are these nations gonna, gonna hear the statutes? How are they gonna hear them? They're gonna hear the statutes one in our conversation, that's one. When we go to the seat and teach, that's another. You understand? The way our children communicate with one another, how they deal with each other, they're gonna see, they're gonna hear. Because they're going to see us doing it, they're going to hear how we deal with one another. Then they're going to see the wisdom of the Lord is being poured upon them now. They are waking up. That's the point. Go ahead. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. He says we are wise and understanding people because the most that God gave us law to be wise and understanding people above all nations on earth. You understand? Give me that in wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19. The most that God gave us laws to be separate from all these nations on earth, to have sense, because the nations don't have sense. We get the sense because the Lord gave us laws to be separate from everybody else. You understand? So we have fallen, we have fallen so low that now we don't have sense. Why? Because we have, we have, we have, we have rejected the most like God's laws as he commanded us in Horeb unto this day. Okay? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 19, verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 19, verse 6. Read. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew. Was what? was fashioned again anew. He says, for the whole creature, meaning for the whole creation, first and foremost, is going into the nation of Israel. For the whole creation in his proper kind. For, for, the, for the creation of God to be in his proper kind, what needs to happen? Give me that in Psalm, okay, 82 verse 5. The reason why the whole creation, the creation, the every bit of God's creation is not, his, is not in its proper kind is because of what we're about to read right now. Psalm 82 verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 5. Read. Really? They know not, neither will they understand. Mm -hmm. They walk on in darkness. 
All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They are not in their proper kind. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why? Jesus, the next verse, verse 6 now. I have said, ye are gods. Mm -hmm. And all of you are children of the Most High. He says, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Talk about the nation of Islam. Go ahead. But ye shall die like men. Mm -hmm. and, and fall like one of the like one of the princes. So he says, but we shall die like men. Meaning what? When we rejected God's commandment, we died like men. Now we just like the rest of the nation. Now that's what he's saying. And fall like one of the princes, meaning what? The men of the other nations now. Now we just like them. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Arise, O God, judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. You shall inherit all nations. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit the nations. You shall inherit all nations. Because guess what? We are going to be teaching the nations the laws of God. For that to happen, as the nation of Israel, we must be in order. We must receive the sense. We must receive the discipline. You understand? We must receive the laws of the moon. We must humble down to what the Bible is saying. Okay. Um, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 19, verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 6. Wait. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again and new. You sound far again. I don't know what's going on with the mic now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 6. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again and new. Serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto him, really? that thy children might be kept without hurt. So now, what we read in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse six, it says the nations are going to say, "Surely this is a wise and understanding people." How, how are they going to say that? Because of what we are reading here, it says serving the peculiar, the peculiar commandments that were given unto them, because the Most High God only gave us peculiar commandments. Peculiar means exclusive. You understand? We are an exclusive nation. We are not like everybody else. The way we are made is not how the nations are made. We don't vibrate in the same frequency. You understand? What makes us move is the laws of God. Anything outside of it is the, guess what? It's to our detriment. That's why you see our people in the world now, they are bugged out. Why? Because they are not moving in the right frequency. Because they are not moving up in the spirit of Christ. Okay? They have no sense. Now, it doesn't look like we are those peculiar people. It doesn't look like we are that wise, great, and understanding people. It doesn't look like that right now. Okay? But the most High God is having mercy upon us. He's waking us up in these last days. Okay? Give me that in Exodus 19, verse 5. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 5. Me? Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed mm -hmm. and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Read verse 5 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So now the Lord is, is he's giving us another stipulation. This is the responsibility that we have been given so that we are without excuse. That's why the Lord keeps repeating the laws of the, the, the laws over and over when he was using Moses and the prophets to repeat things over and over. Why? So that we are without excuse. Hold it. Give me the book of Romans, chapter 1. Okay? Romans 1, verse 20. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You see that thing? It says for the invisible, invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Because when you see the most that God created, the rivers, the oceans, and all of that, you understand? It says, but they are clearly seen because we can see these things. 
read being understood by the things that are made they are understood by the if, things that are hold on they are understood by the things that are made because we can see the ocean we can see the river we can see the sky we can see the birds we can see every bit of god's creation on this earth we know even his eternal power and god you see that thing because when you look at the just a simple example just look at the ocean you understand the ocean is powerful because the spirit of the lord is in there you understand right so that they are without excuse the sort of we are without excuse so everything that the most that god has made the sun the moon the stars the sky you understand everything that you see rain the animal us the four tribes of Israel and the rest of the nations that we created is for so that we are without excuse we don't make excuses because we cannot escape those we cannot escape escape the responsibility that the lord has given us because guess what his, his existence is pristine through the, the the things that are happening in nature you understand just look at so something else as 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 children that is that thing like right that that's a beautiful thing that's a miracle you understand the that sperm is going to morph into a fully grown human being with a mind that some power like this okay so that we are without excuse okay go back to exodus chapter 19 let's five again the book of exodus chapter 19 verse 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine he says we shall be a peculiar treasure unto him above all people for all the earth is mine above all people you show me the number 6 Everything what we are reading is all the responsibilities that the Most High God is given unto us. Okay, the responsibilities that if you want to be above all people, because that's a great responsibility to be the ruler, the, to be the rulers of the earth. Listen, it's not a simple or small. It's not anything to be taken lightly. It's a heavy responsibility. That's why he keeps telling us, listen, I'm, you are a peculiar treasure unto me if you keep my way. That's the heavy responsibility that it is. You told me chapter 7, verse 6. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So now, the same thing we read in Exodus is what we are reading here. The Lord says we are a peculiar treasure unto him. That peculiar treasure comes with responsibility. You cannot just say, oh, no, I'm just Israel. No, that's enough. No, 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 no. It's not enough just to say I'm Israel. Being Israel comes with responsibility. It's a huge responsibility to be an Israelite. Let me say that again. It's a huge, to be an Israelite is a huge responsibility. Knowing that you're Israel is not enough. There's responsibility that goes with that. The way you think, what you, the, the things you say, you know, the decisions you make, how you dress, what you eat. You understand how you deal with your neighbors and all of that? All of that responsibility, what that's what it means to be an Israelite. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew. Okay? Matthew chapter 3. Because this is what, um, this is what, watch this. This is what Christ said. Matthew. Um, Matthew chapter 3. Let's start at verse, let's start at verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Come on. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. What did he say? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. He says, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Meaning what? Fruit good for repentance. Those fruits is what you eat in Galatians, the fruits of the spirit. Go ahead. 
and think not to say within yourselves. Mm -hmm. We have Abraham to our father. You see that thing? It says, it's not enough just because you are the seed of Abraham. We have Abraham to our father. He says, no, 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 that's not enough. You must bring forth truth to meet for repentance. That's the responsibility that comes with being an Israelite. Read it again, verse 9. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Go ahead. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. That's what he said. That's some heavy stuff right there. He's checking them. Because he said, listen, just because you are the seed of Abraham, that's, that's not all and, and that's not that's not all it is supposed to be. Because today you have a lot of our people that say, yeah, I know we are Israel, but they are doing nothing about it. You have brothers and sisters in the camp, in the truth, that he say, no, no, I'm keeping the commandments, I bring this on. But the responsibility that comes with being an Israelite, that one is just is pushed under the rug. You understand? That's what this is going into. It says it's not enough just to say you're an Israelite. No, that's not enough. You have to bring forth truth, meet for repentance. You understand? Wait. And now also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Uh -huh. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire. And cast into the fire. Because guess what? If you don't bring forth fruit, meet for repentance, the Lord says, you are useless, I cannot use you. Why? Because it is a huge responsibility of being an Israelite. It requires study. It requires application. You understand? It requires a whole lot of stuff. I went over this. I'm not going to go over it again. But the point is, this is what was coming out because the same spirit that was back then is the same spirit today. Yeah, I know about Israel. You meet even you meet even our brothers and sisters on the street that say, Yeah, we know we are the children of Israel. So you have this great knowledge, but you are doing nothing about it. Because their faith knows it 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 means it takes it means responsibility. You have to be responsible to be an Israelite. You can't be breaking the Sabbath. You understand? You can't be sleeping around. You can't be lying. You can't be coveting, so on and so forth. You can't be a man. You can't be a thief. Okay? You can't be doing that. Why? Because those are responsibilities that come with being an Israelite. And it's a daily thing. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me. You know what? Go back to Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy 7 verse 6 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Wait. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Wait. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He says, the Lord thy God has chosen us, the children of Israel, the so-called black, black, and so forth, Native American Indian. He chose us to be what? To be above all people upon the face of the earth. And this is the responsibility that the Lord gave us when he was. The responsibility to be the rulers of the earth. Guess what? Yes, it was given to us. But for us to do that, this is what the Most High God commanded us to do. That we almost. You told me to need verse 1. Read that. This is the stipulation. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee, all these commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. For that to happen, we need to do what we just read. He says, if thou shalt hearken diligently, you understand? Meaning you must be consistent. You must study consistently and apply consistently. It says diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, not which I suggest to you, no, which I command. Okay? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That means for this to happen, this requires discipline. 
We cannot be above all nations of the earth if we lack discipline. Watch this. Give me that now. Go back. Now go to Sirach now. Sirach chapter 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 18 and verse 14. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18 verses 14. Read. Right? He hath mercy on them that receive discipline uh -huh. and that diligently seek after his judgments. He says he has mercy on them that receive discipline. The Lord, will all, all, the Lord will only extend mercy when we receive discipline, when we receive his discipline. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. He says he has mercy on them that receive discipline. Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 5. Read that. Was the Solomon, chapter one, verse five. Mm -hmm. For the Holy Spirit of discipline for the what? will flee. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit gives you discipline. What is the Holy Spirit? Give me that in the book of uh, John 14, verse 26. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. No, verse 26. Start of verse, the, start of verse 15. The book of John, chapter 14, verses 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's the conditional statement. If you love me, if you say you love me, you must do what I say. You must do what I command you. That's what he's saying. Read. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Go ahead. That he may abide with you forever. You see what he's saying? It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. So verse 16 is not going to happen if verse 16 did not happen. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will. This is the promise now. And I will pray to the Father that he, want, he shall give you another comforter. We shall abide with you forever. Go ahead. Even the spirit of truth. So that comforter is the spirit of truth. Wait. Whom the world cannot receive. Because the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. Because the world, they are in love with lies and deceit and confusion. You understand? Wait. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but he, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He says, but we know him because he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The spirit of truth. Okay, read on. Watch this. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Read it again. Read it again verse 18. Watch this. The book of John chapter 14 verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So you see what you see what the comforter is? Christ. He is the comforter. You understand? He is the comforter. For the Holy Spirit of discipline, that Holy Spirit, that spirit of truth, that's talking about Christ. That's the spirit of Christ. You understand? Now jump down to the 26. You know what? The book read of John. The, you know what? Read this 19. Let's read this 19. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. And the world seeth me no more. So this is Christ speaking. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Because our people don't see Christ. You can read them with the Bible, you understand? They still don't see Christ. You know why? Because they don't apply the laws of God. Christ is the spirit of truth. If you don't apply the laws of God, you're not going to see Christ nor understand Christ. Because that's why in the Christian church they separate Christ from the law. Whenever they talk about Christ, they don't, there is no law. In their mind, Christ replaced the law so we can do whatever we want. Okay? That's why they are unable to see Christ in the, in the scripture. You understand? Read that again. 
the book of John, chapter 14, verse 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. But ye see because, me. But you, but you, you children of Israel, you that keep the commandments, you men and women, you brothers and sisters, keep the laws of God. He says, but you see me. That's why we can read the scriptures, we can see Christ. Because the spirit of Christ is in us. Okay, wait. Because I live, and ye shall live also. You see that he says, because I live. Why does he live in us? Because now we are repenting of our sins. You understand? We acknowledge the sins that we committed, and now we're getting rid of the filth that is in our spirit. For all these years, we've been what? We've been evil. You understand? All of us deserve death. But the spirit of the, the, the most high God in his mercy, he poured his mercy upon us to allow Christ to die for us so we can get a chance to get the kingdom. You understand? To get rid of the evil that we, we've got. So now it says, you see that part, it says, I live, ye shall live also. So which means, when you don't have that, then when you don't keep the commandments, guess what? You're not going to have comfort. You're always going to be stressed out about everything. You're always going to be confused about everything. You understand? Nothing will make sense to you. Why? Because you don't keep the commandments. Or you don't want to keep the commandments. So there will always be confusion all the time. Now watch this. Jump down to the 26. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of discipline in wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Go ahead. Whom the Father will send in my name. Read. He shall teach you all things. Mm -hmm. And bring all your things. No, and no. bring all things. Come on. You the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to your remembrance. Wait. Whatsoever I have said unto you. You see that part right there? It says, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Because guess what? The thing that the Spirit of Christ will teach us, it will teach us to keep the law, to repent and ap apply what is written and, and acknowledge ourselves as the children of Israel and repent as the Israelites. And what? And repent of our sins. That's what the Spirit of Christ will teach us. And not only that, it will bring all things to our remembrance, like who we are, where we come from. How how the how has the how did the world how did the world end up the way that it is now right now? How did we end up here? You understand? What is the responsibility that we that was given to us, which we rejected, which allowed us to be in the conditions that we're in? That, that's what will be brought to our remembrance. That we are the market nation on earth. That is what is being brought to our remembrance. You understand? That we are above all people on earth. That is what being brought to our remembrance. That the man is the head, the woman must follow. That is what is being brought to our remembrance. That we must build our families according to the scriptures. That is what's being brought to our remembrance. Okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. Really? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The Holy Spirit of discipline. Because that Holy Spirit of discipline is the Spirit of Christ. That's how we become Christ's disciples because we are disciplined in the what the Holy Ghost, the laws of God. Okay, go, go ahead. We'll flee deceit. We'll flee deceit. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Thoughts that are without understanding is thoughts that do not make think on God's law. Thoughts that do not ponder on God's commandments. Right? And will not abide. When unrighteousness cometh in, he says they will not abide when sin comes in. Will not abide when you want when you entertain sin when you don't fight to get rid of that sin. He says the Holy Spirit will leave you. Now let's go back to Sirach 18. Let's go back there again. This is chapter 18 and verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 14. Wait. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline. Come on. 
and they diligently seek after his judgment. They diligently seek after his judgment, meaning his punishment and his reward. They, whether or not, when, whether we, when we keep the law, the Lord will, will, will what? Will judge us righteously. When we break the law, the Lord will punish us righteously. Okay? So it says, He has mercy on them that receive discipline. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 14, verse 1. The Lord will have mercy on them that receive discipline. Isaiah 14, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now stop right there. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Remember what he just read in chapter 18. He says he has mercy on them that receive discipline. So of the children of Israel, those that keep the commandment, the Lord will have mercy. What type of mercy is the Lord going to have upon us? Keep reading. And will yet choose Israel. Go ahead. And, and what? set them in their own land. And set them in their own land. That is the mercy now. The land of Israel. The promised land. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So what we are reading is this. It says, he has mercy on them that receive discipline. That is, that is an example of it. When we receive discipline, guess what? The Lord will have mercy on us. The mercy that the Lord will have upon us is what? He will take us. He will choose us even at the last day. That's what you are seeing right now. And when the Lord returns, we will be taken back to our homeland. In the wilderness, then the homeland. You understand? That's the mercy that the Lord will show upon the sea. Go back to Spirit now. Ecclesiastes 18. Verse 14 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 18, verse 14. Where? He had mercy on them that received discipline. Go ahead. And that diligently seek after his judgment. And that diligently seek after his what? His judgment. Meaning what? The reward, the punishment. Understanding the reward of keeping the commandment and understanding the punishment of breaking the commandment of the Most High. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Because I know some of you forgot already. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. We are going over here to understand the responsibility that was given as well. Those responsibilities, they require what? They require discipline. You cannot be rulers. We, 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 yes, we are chosen. We are the chosen generation. You understand? We are the chosen seed. But to be the chosen seed is not just by name only, but it's by deed. We, yeah, we understand we are Israel, but to understand fully what it means to be Israelite, you must understand the responsibility that goes with it. You told me to need verse 1 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Read. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the beginning of this verse is telling you what? It's telling you the, the responsibility that goes with being the rulers of the earth. We must have discipline. Because for you to what? To hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments, which he commanded us. Guess what? That it takes discipline to do that. It takes discipline to do that thing. You understand? For you to be the rulers of the earth, we must have the spirit of discipline, which is the spirit of Christ. To discipline ourselves in applying God's commandments. Next verse. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now that's a heavy statement right there. It says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So blessings will not come without labor. Let me say that again. Blessings will not come without labor. You want blessings, you must labor to receive those blessings. That's what he's telling us right there. To receive those blessings, that everlasting kingdom and rulership and dominion, we must labor to receive that. We must show ourselves worthy to receive that thing. Because it was given to us at one time, guess what? He broke every commandment that was commanded, or that was given unto us. Watch this. Give me that in second Ezra chapter 7. Okay? Just, to, just, just as an example of what we've done. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 
We're going to do chapter 7. We're going to start at the 10. Second book of Esdras, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. He says, Even so also is Israel's portion. Watch this. He's going to, he's going to get clearer what Israel's portion is. But I just want to bring this out. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam and set the bounds of the people according to no, the no. number of the children of Israel. Mm, you're not reading that right. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 8. When he set the most when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So now this is when the Most High was allocating land for the nations that he created. But we have got the best land that they almost than everybody else got the threat. The point here is, he says, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Watch this, next verse. For the Lord's portion is his people. So the Lord's portion, the Lord's portion is his people. Go ahead. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. Jacob is the, is the Lord of his inheritance. We are the Lord's inheritance. You understand? We are the most of God's inheritance on this earth. And our inheritance is the land that was promised to our forefathers. And the, king, the kingship, you understand, that goes with that. Now watch this. Go back to second address now. Chapter 7, verse 10 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 10. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then he said unto me, Even so is Israel's portion. Even so is Israel's portion. Remember, we were given the best land, and then everyone else got everything else, what was left. You understand? That's one of the examples. Now, he's going to go deeper into that. Because we got the best land, okay? The Lord that God is being chosen the best land on earth for Israel, for earth Israel's portion. But what's the next, the next blessing that goes with that? Go ahead. Because for their sakes, I made the world. You see that something like that? Because for their sakes, I made the world. Meaning the world would not exist if Israel was not here. The world would not exist. The only reason why the planet is here, the sun, moon, and stars are here, are here, is because of us. We were made first, then these things were made up. And now I'm going back to the spirit world. You understand? In the spirit realm, that's when, because everybody agreed, we went over a class like this. Everybody agreed what their role was going to be. Now, over and above that, Everything that is created today, everything you see, the sun, the moon, and stars, the earth, and everything and everyone on it was made for Israel. Not the other way around. Okay? Read verse 11 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 11. Because for their sakes, I made the world. Because for their sakes, I created the world. Go ahead. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. He says, then was decreed, then what, what, is, what was decreed? The, the, the conditions that we're in right now, not living forever, because of what, because of what, what happened in the garden, that is what, that, that is what is decreed now. The struggle, the affliction, you understand? Not being at ease among these nations, that is what was decreed. Because we broke the commandment, now what is decreed now is done. Watch this. You told me to read. Okay, the 66. Start of the 65. You told me to read the 65. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 65. Uh -huh. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. You see that thing? 
This is what is decreed now. Among these nations, you're not going to find no ease. Meaning nothing is going to come easy to you. You're going to have to work hard to get it. Wait. Come on. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. You're not going to be able to rest. Wherever you are, you're always worried and struggling and complaining. Do you understand? There's nothing, there's no surety of life. Go ahead. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. But the Lord shall give you there a trembling heart. Read. And failing of eyes. And failing and of so eyes. Failing of, of eyes. Man. Failing of eyes. I need you to stay with me. A, a trembling heart. You understand? You're always scared. You understand? And failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Stress. Bad up. Okay. Read. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. That is what is decreed now. Loss of everlasting life. Slavery, captivity. Living in the ghetto. Eating poor, eat, eating, eating uh, poor food. You understand? Poor diet. Okay. Poor education. Poor living conditions and all that. Why? Wow, that is what is decreed now. Okay? And it's done. Go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 11. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. Mm -hmm. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Go ahead. He's going to get into the details of what was the key that is now is that wait? Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. You see that thing? Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. Meaning what? We are gonna you are born in hardship, you are born in bondage, everything is hard. You have to work extra hundred times to get to get a crown. Okay, wait. Full of sorrow and travail. You see that thing? Full of sorrow and travail. I mean, you really need to sit down and examine the situation. Look at the conditions that we're living in. The life that we're in now is full of sorrow and travail. Full of, so, full of sorrow and pain and anguish. You understand? Read. Right? They are but few and evil. They are but few and evil. We no longer live forever no more. You understand? We can barely, we can barely live up to 60. Now, 60 years old, listen, you'll be, you'll be jumping for job. Okay, ready? Full of perils and very painful. You see that thing? Full of, full of perils and very painful. That is what is decreed now. We're catching hell out here. Okay? Left, right, and center, we're catching hell. Ready? For the entrances of the elder, for the entrances of the elder world were wide and short. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and short. You understand? We didn't have to work for it. You understand? It was handed to us on a silver plate. Wait. And brought immortal fruit. It brought immortal fruit. I'll give an example. Give me that in the book of Genesis. Okay? Give me Genesis chapter 5. Hmm. Let's see. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 27. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 25. Genesis 5, verse 25. The book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 25. And Methuselah lived an hundred and hundred and eighty. And seven years and begets Lamech. Read on. This is Methuselah now. Read. And Methuselah lived after he began Lamech 780 and two years. Okay, come on. And 782 years after he began Lamech. Read. And beget sons and daughters. Read. All the days of Methuselah. And, were all, 900. and all. And all the days of Methuselah 
You are speaking subject. Read that part again. The book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 27. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years, and he died. You see, you see how old he was? He was 969 years old when he died. 900. Almost a thousand years when he died. This is just an example. It says, and brought immortal sleep. Okay? Right now, you can barely make it to 50. Let's go back. Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 13 again. Seven, second book of Ezra, chapter, second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 13. No, chapter 7, 7, verse 13. I'm sorry, 7, verse 13. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 13. Wait. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and short. Wait. And brought immortal fruit. And brought immortal fruit. That's an example of what we read in Genesis 5. Go ahead. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, mm -hmm. they can never receive those that are laid up for them. You see what it's saying? Is that if then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, the straight and vain things you talk about what? The hell that we have to catch now to receive the king. Now we have to go through pain and misery and anguish and affliction. Meaning what? We, gotta, we must go through the fire in order for us to, deem, to, to prove ourselves worthy to receive the kingdom that the Lord has promised to our forefathers. You understand? We must try, so we must go through the straight and vain thing. He says they can never receive those that are laid up for them. And you're not going to get the kingdom if you don't go through the pain. You will not. So that responsibility of being the rulers of the earth, it does not come without responsibility. It cannot come with when you are lazy, you make excuses, it will not happen. Because a lot of us were in La La Land. We don't really think and examine the responsibility that goes with waking up the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not a small job. That's why not everybody is doing it. And if they are, they are not putting in the work to get to make to bring this work about. They are not doing it. Because it takes a lot of work to get this work done. And it's gonna be it's gonna get even harder and harder as we are approaching the second coming of the Lord. Okay. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 2 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 2. Wait. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the, of the Lord thy God. You see what I'm saying? And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Just, it's not just hearkening unto the voice of the Lord, it's to apply. Go back to uh, the biblical Trinity. Okay, the Bible chapter 26, we can read about it. The Bible chapter 26 and verse 3, I believe. Mm -hmm. Read it. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. You see that thing? If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. And do them. We must apply. That's what the Lord wants. The most High God wants us to apply his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. That is what the Lord is looking for. Okay? Now watch this. Now give me extra strength. Because this is the responsibility that was given to us. And we rejected all of them. You understand? Exodus 20 verse 1. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read down. We're going to go over the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to do a deep breakdown. But I just want to bring something out. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now watch this. He says, I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Because guess what? The most, like I, I, I did mention, the most like God, he is always reminding us of what he did for us. Okay? All the time. 
He's always reminding us because he knows he's us, we forget. Okay, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 20. But the Lord had taken and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. You see what he's saying? Is that he is reminding us again. He says, and brought you, it has brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 32. We are the we are, we are the Lord's portion. Israel is the Lord of His inheritance on earth, as it is in heaven. You understand? Read again, verse twenty. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter four, verse twenty. But the Lord had taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, mm -hmm. even out of Egypt, to be unto Him a people of inheritance, as you are this day. Go back to where he was at now. Exodus 20, the three. I mean, the two again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Next verse. Go ahead. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is the first commandment. This pertains to the most high. Right? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Now watch this. Nor serve them. Hold on. You see verse 4? Read verse 4 again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So verse two, verse three, and verse four, verse, verse four is going to be properly explained in verse five, when it says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It's gonna tell you why you must not make unto thee any graven image. The point of not making them. Okay, read verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. That's the key right here. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. So if he's saying don't make graven images, he's not saying that. If the key is that don't bow down yourself unto them. Because when you read when King Solomon was building the temple, what was he commanded to do? He was commanded to create cherubim. You understand? These are graven images. He wasn't bowing himself down to them. So that the point is. Don't make graven images to bow down yourself unto them. Wait. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So now, you see that part right there in verse 5? It says, visiting the, the iniquity, it says, visit, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So now what you want to notice out of that verse is that, that you will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children. So does that mean the children are going to pay for the what? The children are going to pay for the sins of their fathers? Give me that in Deuteronomy 24, verse 16, real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You see that thing? Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Give me that in 2 Kings, chapter 14. Second Kings chapter 14 and verse, verse 6. Second book of Kings chapter 14, verse 6. But the children of the murderers, he slew not, 
according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Every man shall be put, meaning you are going to be judged for your own sin. You are not going to be judged for somebody else's sin. You understand? Let's go back. Exodus 20, verse 5. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So every third or fourth generation, you generally you come back. Okay, go ahead. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now watch this. We're coming back here. Give me that in Hosea chapter 1. Hosea 1, verse 10. The book of Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, mm -hmm. which cannot be measured nor numbered. Which cannot be what? And shall which cannot be measured nor numbered. So according to the scriptures, we, are, we cannot be measured nor numbered. We cannot be measured nor numbered. So now when we go back to Exodus 20, verse 6 again, read that. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So now we just go to reading that the Lord says, we are what we are cannot be measured no number. That's how many we are. You understand? But here's saying he's gonna show mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So meaning what? He says thousands. So he's letting you know, he's letting you know that a lot of our people they are not going to repent. That's why he's saying thousands out of a hundred of millions of this thousands, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments meaning very few in Israel that will keep the commandments to the teeth. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? That is what he's saying right there. Um, remember what we read in Sirach chapter 18 verse 14. It says, he has mercy on them that receive discipline and that seek, that diligently seek after his judgment. So he's going to show mercy unto those that keep his commandments. You understand? Read. Right? You know what? Give me, mm, give me second as nine, real quick. Second as nine, the twenty-one, quickly. I just want this, then we'll go back. Second book of Ezra, chapter nine, verse twenty-one. Wait. Right. And I saw, and spared greatly. You know and what? have kept me. Start at verse twenty. Start at verse twenty. Second book of Ezra, chapter nine, verse twenty. Go right. ahead. So I considered the world. And behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come in, that were coming to it. There was peril, there was peril. The same peril that we read in Second Ezra, chapter 7, the 18 down. You understand? Read. And I saw and spared it greatly. Mm. And have kept me a grape of the cluster. Go ahead. And the plant of a great people. He says, but I have kept me a grape. Not great, great of a cluster. So out of a cluster of grapes, the Lord says, I'm only choosing one grape out of that cluster. Right? And a plant of a great people. Read on. Let the multitude perish thee, which was born in vain. Now that's heavy right there. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. They were born just so they can be put to death. Wait. And let my grape be kept and my plant. Wait. For with great labor have I made it perfect. Meaning what? We're going to have to go through pain to get this kingdom. We're not going to get it for free. It's not going to be handed over to us on a silver platter like it was when we read in 2nd Ezra chapter 7. It's not going to happen like that. That's what it says, for with great labor have I made it perfect. You understand? Is that let my grace be kept and my plant. 
So the multitude is com is is what is 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 is, is um, the multitude is the same as what we read in verse uh, twenty one when it says um, and a keeping a grape of the cluster. So the cluster is the multitude. The grape is making reference to what to the thousands that love him and keep his commandments. Out of what? Out of a, an innumerable multitude. Out of this innumer innumerable multitude that we read in Hosea, guess what? The Lord is says, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Now let's go back to Exodus 20, verse 7 now. The book of Exodus, the 20 verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Because I, I broke I broke this down. I explained it what it means. I gave you all the sense what it means to take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Okay, you can go to your notes. Okay, it's in Proverbs chapter 30. Here's a quick precept. Give me Jeremiah 29, verse 9. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Go ahead. For they prophesied falsely unto you in my name. Uh -huh. I have not sent them, said the Lord. You see that thing? He says, they prophesied falsely unto you in my name. You understand? I have not sent them, said the Lord. So meaning what? Like, for instance, in the Christian church, they say the Lord spoke to me when the Lord has not spoken. Okay. They teach things that are not written in the scriptures. They make up their own doctrine. They are taking the name of the Lord that God is vain. Okay, let's go back. Exodus 20. Now, Exodus 20 is 8 now. We're going to read 8 to 11. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor. And do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Right. For, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So now from verse, verse 3 all the way to verse 11, these are laws that pertain to the most high God. You understand? Give me that in first John 5 and 3. First John chapter 5 and 3. Watch this. These are the laws that pertain to the most high God. Okay. The first four pertain to the heavenly father. Read that. First John 5 and 3. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. So to love the most high God, you must keep his commandments. So the first four commandments in Exodus 20, they pertain to the most high God. That's why it means to love the most Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Go back to Exodus 20 now, verse 4. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now watch this. You know what? Jump up to verse 11 again. I just want to touch on something. Read that. No, no, read verse 8. The, then read verse 8. You want to jump down to verse 11. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath For, day. Hold on. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, it's about the Sabbath. Verse 11 now. Watch this. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. And did what? Wherefore, and rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. So it's letting you know when the Sabbath, this Sabbath that he's talking about here, took about the seventh day Sabbath. This is the seventh day Sabbath, is, is explaining it. You understand? Wait. And rested the seventh day. 
Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So now what you want to notice here is that all the high holy days, remember the high holy days, the, the, the seventh day Sabbath is not the only Sabbath that we observe. There's the new moon Sabbath, you understand? We have the Sabbath on the Feast of Pentecost, it was a Sabbath. We have the Sabbath on the Feast of Tabernacles, you understand, on Passover, the memorial of blowing of trumpet, you understand, the day of atonement. All of these are Sabbaths, okay? It's not just talking about the seventh day Sabbath. I need everybody to understand that. So when you read Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, don't just think about the seventh day Sabbath only, but it's talking about all the other Sabbaths that we observe they came into the high holy days or the feast days that the Lord has ordained for us when you read the Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay, read verse 18 now, Exodus 20. The book of Exodus of the 20 verse 13. The book of Exodus of the 20 verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So now what you are seeing here, these laws, now this is the final six that pertain to your brother now, your neighbor. How to deal with your brother and how to deal with your sister, your wife, your husband, and so forth, your children. The last six, the final six, goes into how to deal with your neighbor. Second John verse 6 now. Second book of John verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. Mm -hmm. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. From the time of Genesis, we were given laws. That's why when, uh, when Cain killed his brother, they say he was a fugitive. Because what did he do? He committed murder, which goes against what we, the commandments that we just, we just in the final six, that deals with your need. You understand? So now, watch this. When you jump, uh, go back to Exodus 20, Exodus 20 and verse 14. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 14. Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This, this, this not only is not just talking about you cheating on your wife, you cheating on your husband, you sleeping with somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband. It goes beyond that. Homosexuality, they are breaking this law. The law, the, the, thou shalt not commit adultery. Because they are going outside of the laws of marriage. You understand? Bestiality, sleeping with animals and so forth. Sleeping with your aunt. Sleeping with your grandma. That's committing adultery. You understand? Those are abomin abominable things that we were doing in Egypt. If you read Leviticus, the 18th chapter, you can see all of those laws that pertain to what? To this commandment right here. So you've got commandments and you have laws that are associated with the commandment. You understand? So now watch this. Give me that in first John 4, verse 20. I'm almost done. First John chapter 4, verse 20. You know what? Hmm. Give me that in Matthew. Give me Matthew 22 verse. Matthew chapter Matthew 22. We're gonna start in verse 33. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 33. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Because the way Christ taught, he taught with boldness and confidence. Right. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Meaning they gathered together against him now. You know? Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question. Tempting him and saying, Wait. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great commandment in the law? Because they want to tempt him. Wait. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. 
Oui. This is the first and great commandment. So now, that's what we just read in Exodus 20. The first four that pertain to the most like God. Like we read in 1 John 5 and 3. Okay, come on. And the second is like unto it. Oui. Thou, sh thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. On on these two commandments. On these one. Hang, on these two commandments. On these two. On these two. On these two commandments. Wait. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He says, on these two commandments, the two commandments what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You understand? Now watch this. Now read verse 39 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He says, What? Read that part again. Thou shalt love thy no, no, neighbor no. as thyself. Read, read the verse again from the top. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the second is like unto it. Like unto it. Like unto it. Give me that in first John chapter 4, verse 20. And the second is like unto it. The second commandment is just like the first. Like unto it. Here's an example. First John chapter 4, verse 20. First book of John chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had seen, how can he love God, whom he had not seen? So now, read the verse again, verse 20. First book of John, chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Stop right there. For he, he says, if a, man say, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Because how do you love God? We just read it in Exodus 20, verse 3 down to verse 10, I mean to verse 11. These are the laws that pertain to the most high. If you say you love God, but you hate your brother, remember it says the second is like unto it. So you cannot love God and hate your brother. Or you cannot love your brother and hate the most like God. No, you have to apply both. Because the first and the second, the, the second is just like the first. They go hand in hand. If you love God, you're going to love your brother. If you hate your brother, you're not going to love God. You cannot, you, you won't be able to love your brother and, and, and hate the Lord. No. If you break one, that it affects the other as well. That's why it says, the second is like unto it. Read verse 20 again. First book of John, chapter 4, verse 20. Wait. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. Stop right there. Let's, for an example, right? Let's say the brother is breaking the Sabbath. They don't want to keep the Sabbath. So they are breaking the law that they came to the most high. But at the same time also, what are they doing? They are also breaking the law that they came to their name. Because the more, when you break the law, guess what? You are keeping us in captivity. So you don't love your neighbor. When you are, when you see our brothers and sisters buying and selling on the Sabbath day, they hate the Lord and they hate their people. Because if they love their people, they want to keep the Sabbath day holy, okay, according to the scriptures. And guess what? We are, we are one step closer to getting the kingdom. Because the Sabbath is symbolic of the, the rest that we're going to receive when the Lord returns under the first resurrection. That first thousand years of Christ, and then after that, the final judgment. And after that, we live forever. You understand? So what we're reading here is, this, I'm just giving an example when it says the first is like, the, the second is like unto it. You break the Sabbath, you also hate your brother. As an example. Read again, verse 20. First book of John, chapter 4, verse 20. Read. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. 
For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had seen, how can he love God, whom he had not seen? You see that thing? You have not seen the Lord, but you still must apply his command. You've seen your brother, you must still apply the commandments that pertain to your brother. It's called charity. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it means. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? I'm going to end the class right here. Let's give me that in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ for laying his life down. For laying his life down for us. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand to the Lord. Oh, praise to the most high. Oh, praise to the most high. Oh, praise to the brothers and sisters.